the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Okay, we're back for episode 34 of Queen of Embers. Every time, Nick. Trying to, I see what you're trying to do. Uh, we're going to pick right back up where we left off. As we were preparing for the journey with Master Wolfgang and others. He continues talking about it. You can see that already Commander Tannenfelder and his, and his group of Brigandine soldiers uh, begin to head... West, beyond Brigand, beyond Brigand, beyond Durandal, toward the direction that the sun will set. It is almost midday now. You've attended to some shopping, some purchases, spilling your the coin that the, has been given to you with the Baroness's captain of the We did it off camera for our viewers to spare you the shopping trip. <laughs> <laughs> Because nobody wants to watch that. Um, or if they do, I don't know. You tell us. Yeah. Your patrons. Well, sometimes yeah. they like to know what you bought, just not the process of going through buying it. Ooh. That's right. So let's go on the table. Tara, what did you buy? I bought some male armor. What did you trade in? Uh, my leather armor. Nice. What about yourself, Harper? I got a metal shield, so that way I have the protective quality, which allows me to block incoming projectile weapons. Not gunpowder, though. Um... And then I also got a military lance to replace my fire hardened spear. I felt like that was a nice, decent yeah. upgrade. Uh, so it has the powerful reach and vicious qualities. Ooh, not bad. Banneker? Arrows. All right. Hey, Arrows. That ain't cheap. Alistair? I actually I bought some leather armor and traded in my quilted. It's uh, difficult for him to. Uh, he is a. Uh, He's a big man, and armor is expensive. So he's six feet. So he is over six feet. Elisa? Bought uh, quilted armor, a hunting bow, and arrows. And yourself, Warren, Warren purchased a variety of healing equipment and uh, consumables, um, including a plague mask. I did have a question for you, actually, before yes. we get started. I'm trying to find uh, where hirelings might be in the book. There's a section at the beginning of Trapping that talks about wages. Yep. Yeah. It's, the, so, it's the first, it's the second page, I believe. Second or third page. 216, perhaps. I believe. Uh, thank you very much. Wages. So you see, like, professional bodyguards would get paid 80 brass pennies a day. So what I might do is, in addition, while we were doing our thing, is that I uh, look for... Somebody who basically knows the road. Just hire a guy. Navigator. Not even a, yeah, it, it doesn't require much unless we're following roads. So, but yeah, let's we'll see if that uh, navigator. Let's see how successful you are. You are at Westgate, uh, which means most people who are here are departing or perhaps oh, looking for work. So, go ahead and make a uh, rumor test. Rumor test. This will be routine. All right. Rumor, a routine rumor Can test. Can I assist? Uh, sure, certainly. Why not? Red is always in my place. <laughs> this is uh, my tenth place. Red is my tenth place. I'm 61. I rolled an 03, so nice. we're good. Well, you meet someone who is more than happy to assist you on the road. He knows the way between here and Hastings, but he prefers to go any further west. I'm not going through the stead wall. Are you mad? <laughs> but here in Hastings, no problem. He's a local. Would it be a teamster? Would that be the closest sure, to the wage? Yeah. That's a straight shot, though. Right. About three days to Hastings. Well, maybe he doesn't want to go there. Maybe he has no business in it. 
far west. I can show you how to get to Hastings right. at least. Yeah. I know the roads well enough. Travel back and forth. All right. You got to uh, 28 brass a day. You provide your own food. He agrees. So what we'll do in this case is we will, uh, since you get a hireling at this point, we will allow, um, excuse me, we'll allow Alistair to play the role of guide and use navigation as if he had one skull rank in it. Nice. Good nice. move, brother. Yeah. Pretty intelligent. I assume uh, all of us are willing to throw in the community funds towards the uh, towards this man's wages. Yeah. 28 brass a day. Don't get cheap ass. I'll throw in five shilling. That's plenty. All right. I was going to say, put the boss's foot in this bill. He's still got five coins of mine. There we go. Beautiful. Looks like you've made your your business in Durendal, the um, Master Wolf King says. Hope we're not too far behind in schedule. No, we're just fine. Just a few final preparations here before we hit the road. Is there anything else we need to attend to before we leave Durendal? Uh, have we acquired our horses yet? Uh, yes. Okay. There will be palfreys, one and all, for each of you. You got a palfrey. I'm got... not saying I'm looking this gift horse in the mouth, but I literally am going to be looking this gift horse in the mouth. So I'm checking it out and using handle animal test to kind of get a feel for it. You are not making any skill tests because there's no real risk of failing. Okay. Um, good horse. It's got some years on it. It's not a nag by any means. Okay. It's road worthy. Okay. You, if it smells it's blood or there's a gunch, I'll probably bolt with it. Unless you, unless you, to try to, to try to control the horse, but they are. These horses were rented. Mm-hmm. Listen, I uh, appreciate you doing what you did, even though you didn't didn't want to. And it was obviously a bad idea. <laughs> so when we get back from this, and it comes time to pay up the uh, animal mender. I'm paying for it. All right. A month of stabling. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I think I wrote down, down the stabling for that. It's normally eight brass pennies a day. Hey. So it's not bad. Like, it's not expensive. I mean, you're going to pay more on like whatever provisions they pay or used to. Sure, but... Uh, yeah, three times the normal amount to... I made that call. I'm owning up to it. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fine. He's still a bit upset about it, but he appreciates it. Is there anything I can help with before we strike out? Any questions you may have? Go through the dialogue wheel. <laughs> any, Wait until they all gray out. Any, <laughs> yeah, gray out all these dialogue wheels. <laughs> any dangers upon the road we need to worry about? Yeah, he says, plainly. People know... About the Baroness's intentions. Mm-hmm. At least in the courts. She's going to make what they've called the procl- the Great Proclamation yeah. here in just a few nights. And the people under her will know. It'll no longer be rumor, it'll be truth. Nobody would dare strike out against her grace in the streets or her people. On the road, it's a different story. Aye. Not everyone's on board with this secession. And is the precious cargo going to be on top of that? As he points to the monstrosity. I'm sorry? Is the precious cargo going to be up there? She'll be in. Of course. Safe. Safe as can be. So as long as we keep anybody from reaching the ship, it should be fine. I'm not going to tell you how to do your soldiering. This question, it's not. Suppose you do it all, soldiers, do you figure it out in the moment? Right. But if she was riding on the ground on the horse, I'd have different ways. That's all I'm saying. She'll be up on the ship. She'll be safe on the matter line. Good. <clears throat> any of you have any questions? 
I'll just move my horse up to the front. Relevant <laughs> questions. <laughs> Alright then. I think we're all set. I'll start giving up duties. Krung's gonna see to keep and sorry, let me step back here for a second. I'm gonna be up ahead. Watch them where we're going. Leading us to where we need to go. Who's gonna go with me? Who's this speaking? The this woman? is uh, sorry, my apologies. This is this is um, Master Copper. Someone's riding with me. Who's Up front. Gonna be? No, yeah. Scouting. I, I think he means leading the way. That's right. Scouting. Following the maps. That's what that is, boss. No, he's talking about following the maps. Oh. Scouting's what you do on top. We've got an island. I got us a, uh, me and this boy. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I guess I'll be on top. Who's gonna ride Krong up? Who's gonna ride with Sammy on the ship? Up top, looking out. I guess that's me. Krong's gonna see the cat, Rosa. Excuse me. Krong's gonna see to the provisioning. Keeping the camp. I'll see to it. Oh, you <laughs> So we've got Warren as a survivalist with Krong. We've got Alistair as a guide with uh, Master Hugo. And we've got Banneker as a lookout with Sammy up top on the night line. The rest of you is keep an eye out. Quinter Tenenfelder is 20 minutes strong. We'll be riding some number of miles ahead of us. Nothing's going to be coming that way. But as I said, everyone is alone for the ride with uh, the Baroness's intentions. If they're going to strike, they're going to strike on the road. It's not going to happen in the city walls. The Baroness has powerful enemies. I'll post up on the rear. I'm gonna buy a sack of apples. I just wanna switch that. A satchel of apples? Yes. Let's really do that. Because I mean, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm thinking about attempting to train this horse as we go. That's the, uh, uh, it's the barrel of pickled fish of uh, B&B. Mm -hmm. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. The second edition provisions. Yep. They were really cheap, and it was a lot of pickled fish. Pickled fish. I can get a barrel of cod for 14 silver shillings. That's it. That's it. That's the same reference. You can get it. <laughs> and a 10 foot ladder. Your yeah, horse will not eat that cod! <laughs> a 10 foot ladder, please. My favorite is always the water. I can lead the horse to water, but I can't make it eat cod. <laughs> I'm a codfish. <laughs> that old cotter. Our guide is going to be Alistair. Our survivalist. <laughs> I love that. It's going to be Warren. That's a pretty cool way to handle the... Uh... Their scout. Uh, stealth. Not stealth and sneak. Just the handling the a hireling is basically... Is you're paying X number of money for a self kill rank. Smart. <laughs> Easy way to handle it. And get two navigation. Okay. I thought there was a looking glass in there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm going to buy a looking glass. There's like a gold for all stuff up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, what are they called? Looking glass? glass? Spy. Yeah, looking glass. Right there. Are those expensive? Nope. Same as having that. I haven't spent any money. Where is that? The Madeline grunts and groans like an as you hear this. I'm sorry. Yeah. As the yeah, that large was, woman in Warren begin to tend to the oxen, as there are two score who begin to pull, kind of trudging in the mud. It isn't until all of the uh, yokes become, or the ropes become taut between the yokes, that they kind of. Brace against this great 
galley borne upon wagon wheels and frame, and they seem to struggle at first until they hear this hey whoosh, as his whip kind of snapped overhead, whoosh, whoosh, as Harung and um, Warren are urging the steeds on, and then suddenly the groaning of this huge thing birthed upon the wagons begins to shudder and move Which along person the road. Is is yes. This the oxen? <laughs> yes, much cursing. Curse! Serpent That's right. That's right. The only curse about the mummy is your pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, you strike out midday autumn, leaving the great cauldron of Dorinda behind, leaving behind the suit stained prophet, the going ons with the uh, saltpetermen, the night soil, the night soil collective and their doings, and all that has happened in your month's stay in Dorindal. Leave all of your enemies and all of your friends behind. Durendal quickly fades beyond uh, the ridge of a mountain, and you can only see the smoke and soot rising from a great recess where you know that the city kind of rests as you strike out west toward Hastings. It takes a great amount of effort for the oxen to, to draw this monstrosity along the road as it, as it kind of moves at a very slow and methodical pace. The horses that are a, just slightly faster than a slow gait, kind of trotting along the side as you share small words here and there, and you pass these smaller surrounding villages beyond uh, beyond Grendel's reach. It's like an airship in Final Fantasy VII when you finally leave the city. Isn't it? Sounds like it's not, no. It's <laughs> 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 like Final Fantasy VII. It's, it's Overland when you, Map. When you music. finally leave Midgar, <laughs> it's that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it is. It sounds just <laughs> sorry. I mean, I was thinking about the entire time. That's the travel music from Sirenscape. Thank you, Sirenscape. Um, <laughs> 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 it's a cat tar. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Another six. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so now you leave Durendal behind and... Uh, and, uh, it, um, it will be almost a month until after you return, if you're simply going to kill Tyrion and returning on the same day. By then it'll be winter. It'll be December. I mean, above board, it shouldn't take two weeks to get back, because we won't be dragging this horrible thing, right? <laughs> well, maybe not. We'll leave it alone. Find out. Next time. But... We will first need to make our first round of tests. I believe our guide is going to be Alistair. Uh, now the road uh, is would normally not be too arduous because it is a, a not a paved road, but it is marked without a doubt. But Given that it's been raining pretty heavily over the past few weeks, and that uh, there's basically bringing a fucking ship west, born upon land, um, it's going to make the terrain hard. So it's a hard navigation test, Alistair. Alright. So should I assume that uh, we just use my ability scores and just act like I have one yep. skill rank in navigation? Yep, that's how you treat it. That's right. Makes it easy. Yeah. Alright, guys, this is going to be tough. Not to get this thing stuck in the mud. Yeah, 34% chance. Red first. We're at 7. We're at 7. Dang, son! A success. I need your dice. Great success. Oh, I've only rolled criticals the last two, like, three sessions. As for tending to the animals and to the team of oxen that is drawing the Madeline beyond the roads and looking to the camp and 
seeing to the provisions, Warren, it's going to be a hard survival test. All right. Too bad I am currently at ignore two spill ranks. Mmm, tired, are we? That'll put me at 29%. Bah! But I rolled a 23. But that's a success. Nice. Not a bad start. Banneker, at your height up here, watching out for danger. Making sure the party has a jump on the interlopers on your path is going to be a hard stealth test. Do I get any bonuses for using a looking glass? Sure, why not? I'll give you an initial skill rank. Nice. Dig it. <laughs> okay, uh, hard six. I have a 46. And I uh, rolled a 61. Reroll it. Do you can re roll it if you want to. Use a fortune point. I when do. you re roll, indicate whether you're using a trait, talent, or a fortune point. Okay. I am In the future, using everyone. a yep. fortune point. Looks like a misfortune. And I failed again. So. No benefits from these other folks. I thought we were just muscle. We hired us to help do it. <laughs> we're the best. Nobody rides for free. <laughs> Besides them. But I'm not. <laughs> the day will turn to night. And so on and so forth. As this trek is not all that easy. Um, fortunately following the uh, advice of the hireling uh, and uh, his know-how, he will begin to kind of show you the right path, what roads to avoid, how to get around some patches of trees that may harry or trap the Madeline along the road <laughs> as you are contending with something that is very, very uncommon. One could say almost unique as you're literally bearing an aerostat, a uh, defunct aerostat, uh, to the west as a gift, a gift fit for a baron. Um, so you will manage to, at least as your travel travel to to um, Hastings, uh, will not require any additional provisions. You won't get lost. You won't, meaning you won't go on the wrong road. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, as for keeping to the animals, intending, keeping up conservation, ensuring that you rest well along the way, um, you did succeed, Warren. So anytime you awaken during this time, you always awaken to unhindered. Save for... Actually, no, I think you're fine too, aren't you? It's an urban environment. You're right. Screw it. That's yeah. right. There is a sense of calm, Elisa, that you <laughs> feel out here in the wilderness. So you, everyone will be able to recover to unhindered while they rest outside until you reach until you reach Hastings in a few days. And Elisa was still injured. Or, uh, you were lightly was, injured, but she was moderately. Yes, but you are traveling, so you have not time to tend to it. Could I use my feast or famine trait to cook her nice meals? If you decide to strike camp, you may do so. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'll do that. Or, sorry, make camp. Yes, once the once you begin traveling, you cannot you cannot enter. In essence, you're traveling. It's not it's narrative narrative time. There are no other, no other skill tests that you make during that time unless something gets a mess. It's not of time. It's not structured time. Gotcha. Well, the cacti attacks, but yeah. What's that? Cacti. <laughs> cacti. <laughs> One thousand needles. That's right. <laughs> if they attack, that's yeah. right. You know. Uh, as for Banneker and Rung, or, sorry, not Rung, but Sammy. Sammy. You're keeping lookout on top of the ship. Uh, you're watching out for danger. You're trying to kind of issue good orders back to Alistair and the hired hand to ensure that they're kind of making the right choices, staying out of the staying out of last sight. But uh, and maybe it's just because you're on this giant fucking ship. But you all fail your test along the way. Um, so you oftentimes find along the path that. You were surprised to come up on shepherds or bands of merchants moving this way and that. Maybe it's just the mist that's kind of clinging to the ground or you're kind of being out of your element, Banneker. 
Um, but uh, overall, nope, there's one. What's that? They're already on top of this. Right. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, because he failed, it will increase the threat level by an additional d6. So everyone who <laughs> took a roll on needs to roll two d6 chaos dice. If any land on the six, something may go bad. Uh oh! How many? Yeah, one, three, four, and one. Don't touch my dice. What are you doing? <laughs> so it looks like okay. So Alistair, you you rolled a six. Yeah. Okay. Four and three. Before we get to that one. though, we must determine the hardship of the road upon everyone. Everyone must attempt a hard toughness test to withstand physical peril. It is a hard road. It is not actually. I'm sorry. Let's make that challenging because. Yeah, that's going to be challenging. I think that's fine. Critically succeeded. Nice! Success. 32. No. He failed. Any rerolls? No? Yeah, I'm going to reroll. High five. With a fortune point? With a fortune point. Okay. So you, sir, get a misfortune. Alright, well, no. Nope, still fail. Okay. Who failed? Raise your hand. The road is. I failed everything today. Hard. I don't even know what a success is. It's been a few days at this point, um, and you're feeling a bit out of sorts. Maybe it's just you spent so much time in the city. Maybe it's just the road genuinely is hard. Maybe it's because the weather is not cooperating. Um, Overall, it's just kind of a an uncomfortable ride, an uncomfortable trip. The company you're keeping, they're a little bit cagey um, at times. They're not the, they're not unfriendly. They're just kind of mostly all business. It's really hard to kind of break through to them. Um, so it doesn't make the trip all that easy upon all of you. Um, as those who failed uh, will gain 15 physical peril. Jeez. Suffer physical peril. Yeah. What? Here's another misfortune point for you as I'm going to use the a fortune point to go back up because I did hit ignore one and I want to. Yeah, remember you can spend a fortune point to immediately move one step up the peril condition track right now. Immediately after you suffer peril or damage. Immediately after. Boom, boom, boom. Ignore one doesn't help me. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. To ignore two. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm still screwed. <laughs> I'm still one. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. Well, your uh, your travels um are tough, and um, it's a good thing that um, there's no critical failure on the part of the of Banneker. Uh, or else this could have been far, far worse. Um, but uh, I believe uh, that Alistair was the one who rolled the Fury die, the cast mm-hmm. die, from mm-hmm. Land of the Six. Correct. I would like for you to roll uh, D100. Oh, God. All Let's right. find out what happens. What did my critical success do on the top of this test? By oh, my apologies. Move yourself up one step on the, the Paracondition track. Alright, so red is still the 10th place. Mm-hmm. Uh, 68. 68. You were traveling on an old road along the way, and you're breaking across a moorland. <clears throat> it's probably sometime early that morning. You're a bit tired, a bit worn out. Every morning you basically wake up at the same peril condition track. For those who. Um, and you hear this kind of clattering of iron pots and bang of a mule as kind of slowly crawling up the hill as a trader and his pony, uh, drawing a two-wheel cart lamb of all manner of goods upon it. He, uh, is slow. he kind of 
st almost stops dead in his tracks, and you don't even see it, Banneker. You're like, oh shit. Like, you realize that they're almost in the middle of the road as this team of oxen are coming that direction. And you just passed by this small village. Uh, so it wouldn't be too surprising to find somebody out here along the way. However, um, you did not see them coming. In fact, none of you saw this person coming. And uh, it kind of happened upon him, kind of haphazardly. He will move his cart and pony to the side. If you wish to pass, or if you wish to speak, stop and speak, you may do so as well. You're only seems terrified by. Uh... <laughs> he seems mostly just kind of awestruck at um, what he's seeing. And why wouldn't he? He's not sure really what to make of it. In fact, um, he and us both. Yeah. Just give sort of a. Uh... A nod and a quick acknowledgement, nothing. No, wait, I'll wait till he's like uh, up on me. Oh, Alistair, there's, uh, there's a man down there. <laughs> I ran over to him and I'll give him the thumbs up without yeah, looking back. Yeah, I'll go say hi, basically. Yeah, why not? Just a guy. You will approach and he will take a couple steps back. Oh, there, he says. Howdy. What? What in the blazes is this? It's a uh, gift for a baron. A gift for a baron? Mm -hmm. A mighty baron he must be. He says, marveling at the at the Madeline. Never met him, so can't verify, but uh, so they say. <laughs> but, Which uh, way are you heading west? All right, yeah, we're heading west. We have not yet reached Hastings, right? We're on our way to Hastings. Oh, you're on a few days out. How the road's that way? You come from there? Bit wet. All right, the rain the other day. No, I rain and couldn't none stop out here. Well, it is Romania. I don't know if it does anything else here. That's right, that's right. You notice that he's wearing a heavy cloak to conceal his face and then his... And that the clattering up on the back of his wagon is the clattering is coming from beaten old beaten wooden shields, bent swords, and battered armor. Hmm. Well, where are you heading? This way and that. That seems about the right of it. Kind of points up the off the road. There's an old lake up this way. I've been picking it for about a month and a half. All matter of things are washing down from the ponds. Really? That's right. Like, like all that? Yeah. You know, back when the Jennies and the Dupre were at each other's throats. I heard tale of those, yeah. Those days. Yeah, not far from here, there's a big old fight. I'm surprised there's anything left to pick. <laughs> <clears throat> Most of them lay dead and the, the ponds are drowned in the lake. But these rains, they've been washing all kinds of matter of things up. And I've been picking it clean. Well, looks like fortune's smiling on you. Mine, Father Bless. Well, they say it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> Gee. Whoa! Like your soldiering type. Maybe you should uh, take a look at my wares. Tell me your names. I'll take a look. What did? What was that last part? I missed it. Tell me your names. Where are you from? Ah, uh, name's Harper Clavager. The Paladin. He says. Oh no, no, not me. That's my father. Your father's the Paladin. That yeah, sure is. Well, it's an honor. It's an honor. They call me Rafe. Nice to meet you, Rafe. Well, well I'll take a look here as I'll get off the ball for you. I think we're still moving, right? Yeah, I assume they're still moving. Like, I'll catch up. Sure. There's Is all it... manner of uh, beaten shields that are emblazoned with um, images of minor houses. You find a few peppered in, a... Symbol of the Genevieve, bottom one shield. 
and one that appears to be a uh, a red knight up on it. Hmm. Any of that have the markings of the Dupre? No. Oh, darn. Uh, a marvel, isn't it? He pulls down one of the, the markings of the red knight. Huh. I think I heard tail, something like that. Oh, yes. R the RK. Hmm. My house. Hangs it back up on the back of the side of the wagon. Yeah. All kinds of famous names come from that time. Well, is there anything else, Master Clavager? Oh, no, that one thanks for showing me. But uh, I got a clink clink. I just got a brand new shield. Okay, then. But you have a great day, all right? Take Travel care. safe. Take care, take care. You will head along the way, and he will actually not go back out into the fields where he was. He'll actually head east back toward the surrounding environs of Durindal. You eventually catch up with the others. Yep. You draw forward and the oxen are kind of, you can hear the thundering of the hooves of the oxen as you're moving betwixt uh, all of the great fields of the girdle. Bone picker. Old vultures. I've seen many in my day when I was camp following. Do you have anything interesting to say? Oh, well, he had some old beat-up shields and swords. He was talking about how uh, there was a lake over yonder that, uh, I guess there was an old battle between the Ginnies and the Duprays when they was fighting back in the days. And Well, I guess these storms have been washing up all kinds of things, and well, I guess he got lucky and found a few. Isn't that the problem now? They're fighting again? Well, I don't think that's anything new. Oh, it's just a sort. I mean, but now they fight with daggers and cloaks and poisons. <laughs> they ain't like they're marshalling units. Yet. Oh. Knock on this thing. Knock on the no, side of the it's wood. like they're not marshalling boom, boom, anything. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> anything of interest? Well, I mean, he has some old shields. You ever heard of the, uh, the Red Knight? Standing okay. That's him. Huh. Had a shield with his emblem on it. I remember some story, but they all bleed together. Well, from my memory, he was kind of a right bastard. Killed a whole lot of men. Got a whole lot of men killed. I'm going to try and think back on any stories I'd heard about, like, in between Durendal and Hastings and any battles. Uh, go ahead and make a folklore test. This test will be probably easy for you. Okay. Folklore! <laughs> the horse chortles. Easy. Nay, it says. Nay. <laughs> Nay, you remember nothing. Nay! 63. Uh, and 68 won't do it. No, I don't remember. Uh, well, you pull up a little bit, and some of the names kind of bleed together, and... You ever heard something about Stanton R.K., or was it Clayton R.K., or was it Stanton R.K., his son? There's two of them, you think. Yeah. Right? There's three. You can't remember. Wait, there was more than just one. I think you're about right in there. Father, then a son. Was Stanton the father, or was it Clayton? No. I can't quite remember. I could flip a coin for you, but I wouldn't swear on it. <laughs> oh, what difference does it make? It makes all the difference. History is important. Me. No, it's all dead men and, and whatnot. What's important is now eating and getting on with it. No, what's important is remembering it. Because if once you're forgotten by all men who are living, that's when you're truly dead. Well, that's a morbid way of thinking of things. Can I attempt to figure this out to stop this argument? <laughs> sure. Roll well, a folklore test. This test for you, uh, are you Aridane or... Romanian. Okay, yeah, it'll be routine for you. I don't think it's 70s anymore. A man would, would sire she some... She stays sh- quiet. <laughs> a man could sire remember. some children and pass his valleys along. It just goes on, on right. and on for generations. What was the name Long of the after man you we forget. killed back in Penumbra? Right, but once that old uh, yachter dies and I remembers his name, he's truly dead. dead. <laughs> yep. I'm not saying there's nothing beyond this world. I mean, on this world. Well, I just got one question for you. Boss, can you remember any of the kings from the Second Age? Just name one. Okay.
Okay. That's how important history is. I mean, that was a long time ago. That was, what, a couple hundred years ago now? That is history. Actual I, history. I don't know. I mean, which age was the six companions in? Well, I mean, be first fair. First age, right? Second age? Third age? Well, you third see what Banneker's getting at. It doesn't make no difference. Well, why That's would I have been taught his kings? Well, I'm sure it's all in the history books. <clears throat> if kings, you wanted to look at it, you could. I mean, revenge is revenge, yeah. But okay. Listen, I was just trying to make a point. Yeah. Uh, 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 who were the people that stepped off the home to the first shore? Your point's made. Your point's made. Your people. <laughs> you hear that uh, Master Copper says as he all approaches people. on the horse. Well, there were people here before. People that stepped on the first shore. We'll take the time to break now, he says as it. As the oxen draw to a slow stop, lathered and frothing, their froth mouths frothing and their tongues lolling out as they, as they are worn down. Is it sunset? No, it's about midday. You've done this several times along the path. Oh, gotcha. How many days in are we? Three. So we're basically should be close to. You're very close things? to Hastings, yeah. I'll well, assist in right. handling any animals. They've got Warren and. Probably have that already taken care of. Okay. That's their duties. Uh, How far away from that lake are we? Let's eat something. Uh, maybe... I don't know. You didn't see it. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I just pointed um, over you under. How long do we stop for when we do stop? About a half hour. I'm gonna go check on the barrister. You wanna take a quick ride? She'll actually ascend nope. descend down. No. Last time that happened, didn't turn out too well. I'm gonna stick to the road. Yeah. And take a nice little... Yeah, well, I'm interested in seeing that lake. Nope. We'll let the we'll let the the past lie where it is. Focus more on the future. The barrister will descend from the uh, ship down to the ground. Did any of the thirteen follow us? Not that you've seen. Okay. Or I should say, not that Banneker has seen. Okay. Because they didn't know, like <laughs> hanging yeah, that out <laughs> past. You, you you're assuming Banneker's seen nothing. Okay. How you feel sure of that? There is a, you usually don't know if you fail any sort of tests. It just kind of unfolds I mean, before the path you. Is, I mean, it's really been clear all day. I just missed that crazy miser. That was a bone picker, I mean. Well, it's if I to be stopping, don't you think? The barrister says. It's only... It's not even midday, she says. Well, you got to water the oxen. It wasn't us who decided to stop, but uh, we're just doing what we're told. These old beasts can't do it all day long. They gotta take a break here now, then. Something making you uneasy about it? No, it's just a bit earlier than we stopped yesterday. Mm. I've been keeping time, she says. I suppose there's not much else to do in there, is there? Reading would be difficult. Not easy. It is a magnificent view, though. You get a good look across all of the, the grand vista that you would see across the girdle. It's a shame you're not a painter, then. Not everyone can be the son of Phelan the Bard, <laughs> she says. You know, uh... Oh. I think actually. I think <laughs> she let's, says, tut, tut. Let's not, let's not split hairs on that one. I think I've been... Uh, bringing up the rear too much. I don't think we've uh, introduced ourselves. The name's, uh, uh, like, can I tell what social class she is by looking at her? I'm uh, assuming high class, but. She speaks very plainly. Oh, okay. She's a murderer. Um, name's, uh, name's Tawin Forster. Yes, we became acquainted uh, in the Baroness's court, if you recall. Master Forrester. Oh. Forgive me, there was, uh, there was a lot of pressure for someone of my standing. So. You seem to stand well on your own. <laughs> Not in there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I appreciate your forgiveness nonetheless. You did look like a fish out of water, as most of you did. Mm. I don't blame you. I felt the same way when I first came into the courts of Her Grace. 
What found you in that cult? Patronage. She has seen to my education, and I felt it right to come and to pay tribute to her. She has sponsored my studies since I was a child. You looking at Paris or Rosalia, you would place her maybe 25 years of age. She's, much, she's younger than the Baroness. The Baroness is probably in her 40s. Does, does she have the look? She's got the look. What do you mean? I make sure not to make eye contact is what he's saying. <laughs> no, no, it was the joke about the Baroness. Whether she has the magic, like, she's got the look. I was a tr- I was... I came to the courts of Durindal, where the Baroness was still Baroness Chinaview. <laughs> Some number of years ago, when I finished my studies abroad, I received my certificate of practice from the High Ministry, and this is my first assignment. You're going to be a diplomat for your first assignment. Indeed, she says. This is a um, the largest assignment for your first. Quite a bit of pressure, yes. Yeah. Certainly, but I have sworn an oath to her grace. But I ask, how did she find you so young to be able to sponsor said education? My lady, the girdle was in disarray for some number of years leading up to the rise of the unifier. Before the king was called the unifier, he was still just simply Sir Cassander Malister. East of here, an old lord. I, too, am from Old Lord. In fact, my uncle swore that we were distant cousins of some such of the Malisters, but I can be, no, see no such see no such genealogy. Perhaps it's because I have fair skin and fair hair. As the king does. Well, I mean, isn't that a lot of everything? That have fair skin and fair hair? It's a joke, she says, placing her hand upon your shoulder. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Do not worry. You need not perform for me, Master Forrester. I am not her grace. We are born of common stock, you and I. Okay, well... Uh, Your father, General Dismas. Yeah. He too is from this land. That he is. Mm-hmm. I must say, I am a bit awestruck to be in your, your presence. Like, he looks as if the world had, uh, like, just turned upside down to, to kind of hear that. Uh, uh we well, he was just doing what we we told, you know, we, we serve, all men serve. Yeah. Warren is almost seemingly looking directly toward the sun as your eye is fixing it beyond the light as you're trying to focus and find the Leviathan's eye. He's kind of looking toward there, beyond the clouds, looking for it in earnest. Mm-hmm. You know it somewhere must be somewhere. Algo must be hiding it. The light must be hiding it. Well, at night you will see it, though, again. Yeah, see... See me, father. He's a, he's a good one. You see, he's uh, he's better than better than me for sure. He, he's still got both his eyes. My condolences. As I understand it, he passed. Oh well, yeah, I mean, he made it through with his eyes. Terrible thing that happened in the West. It is. Yeah. It was... But, uh, yeah, I don't feel like talking about it. Fair enough. But to answer your question, milady, I am bearing a great responsibility. But I am prepared. I've spent my whole life preparing for this moment. There is nothing greater standing before us than to see Her Grace ascend 
wear the crown of queen that is rightfully deserved. I suppose we'll do our best not to cock it up for you then. <laughs> All you need do is agree is take me to Kael Tyrion. My the complexity of the diplomacy will take place between the Baron R.K. and I. <clears throat> I'll stand. I'll stand clear then. I'll make sure to leave that all to you. Hmm. Such a grand gesture on the part of our Baroness. This. Uh, you you the Baroness. The Baroness. Or Grace. Uh, she says she Grace herself. I think there is an heirloom of the, the band going on down that way. No, I uh, I checked. Uh, they didn't have any Dupree. They had some. They had some Ginny stuff, but didn't, didn't she say okay? No, yeah. Then our, the, there was that shield with the red knight. Yeah. Yeah. The peddler. I was speaking of the Baron, the D- and Caltyrian. Yeah. Didn't you say okay? I. Yeah. They say. I think from what you said, that goes. You think you might like that? I can go catch him. I'd probably ride back. I didn't no, him. no, you mistake me. The gift. She points toward the Madeline. Oh, well, I, I was just saying from a simpler time. I mean, there was a peddler. He had this old shield. Oh, oh. I saw it all. Oh, all right. She's looking toward Banneker. I saw everything. No, it's fine. All right. Well, sure couldn't cost too much as old and beaten as it is. Hmm. But sentimental... A lot of times adds a lot of value. Yes. I do not think that the Baron would appreciate the shield of one of his dead. of his father's dead soldiers. But it is a fine gesture to think of, though, and I'm certain that he would appreciate it. Far too simple a gift for a Baron, I'd say. Uh, far too simple of a thought, indeed. He, she corrects you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Frankly, I'm reminded of the shield. Seems highly practical to me. Kaltirian is the strongest of shields in the West. I have a figure on that you're giving him something he already owns. Correct. No, I, d- I don't know that a uh, small cart of a merchant who's been just compiling from the dead could possibly serve as a gift for a baron. <laughs> yeah. I feel that I will have a good handle on. The Baron Stanton. I think we were, we were of similar mind. I know what he wants, and he knows what her grace wants. It's uh, Roland of Bailey and Abbey that I fear uh, the, an act of diplomacy with. Oh. And why? I thought he was in good standing with the Baroness. Roland is an Aluronite. He is um, agnostic in his loyalties. And if he has any loyalty, it is, it is to the Baron and his dead father, the Red Knight. May I we get the shield for him. Yeah. I trouble you with my own my own burden. I am sorry. Oh. It's our job to see you to safety, and I assume diplomacy also is involved in somewhat your safety. Yes, I'm sure we'll have more to talk about that after we leave Hastings. Being as we're citizens of Durandal now, I suppose that should be in our purview, so to speak. Things like this will be coming more and more important as time goes on. Do not be so hasty, Carlstetter. <laughs> we will speak more once we reach the stead wall. I would like to bend your ear after I've had some time to think. Sure. Of course. All right. Well, now, I think we've had just about enough time here. You hear that, um, that, uh, Master Wolfgang says, Shall we? He looks toward Warren. Alright, get your asses in gear, you, you dumb oxen. <laughs> Warren and Harung, this monstrously tall woman, go back to the front of the oxen train and will begin to urge them forward, and we will close out here uh, for the evening. So everyone gets 100 reward points. And I don't think there was any corruption tonight. So that's an order rate for everyone. Yay. Wow. Yay, Taki episode. 
There will you will inevitably be revisiting some old history of Aglador uh, in the coming upcoming chapters. Some of the old politics of the girdle. Yep. Sharpen your swords and sharpen your minds. <laughs> These dogs need to shut up. Stop it, dog. Stop it, dog. Curious. All right. So next week we'll, re- we'll continue with Queen of Embers. Right. This is episode 34. We'll see you all next week. Thank you for your patronage, guys. 200. How much are we at now? We are at 201 right now. 201! Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye.